All right, so the first thing we need to do to run our power drive effectively is make sure we have adequate power. Uh, as you can see, being a commercial location, we're only pulling from a, a 208 panel in here. So having our booster, uh, we wanna boost this up as much as we can. And always check the, the spec placard on your machine. Again, a lot of the early power drives uh, were wound for 220. Uh, probably a couple years after we came out from, we started winding them to 240. Um, so we wanna run as close to what our placard says as possible uh, if we can't get uh, exactly there. But this is fine if we run at 233, uh, you've got plus or minus 10% that, that you can run machines on and you should be good to go. So we wanna run uh, on proper power. And if you're not, you've got this uh, overload switch right here that may pop on you. Uh, again, we've run into more issues with guys having too much voltage coming in, but that's also where the booster would come in handy because you can dial it down as well as dial it up. And you'd always want to check that on your multimeter on your machine to truly see what you've got coming in right here at the plug. Uh, your multimeter will tell you that. If you've got too much or too little and you're creating too much resistance, too much heat inside, there is an internal thermal breaker that'll pop. Uh, as well as this overload switch that's a manual reset. If that happens, give it 15 to 20 minutes to cool down. Then you should be able to hit this manual reset and it'll stay pushed in. Then you're good to start your machine up again. But first I would go back and check my cables, uh, any of my plugs, uh, double check what you're, you've got coming out of the wall, uh, see what you've got coming in right at the machine, if your uh, thermal overload uh, pops at all, okay? Uh, and then once we've got proper power, and I'm just gonna unhook this for safety. We're gonna kick our machine back on the kickstand, and we're gonna go ahead and install our power drive plate. And with this, we just wanna make sure when we put it on and rotate it, that we're rotating it all the way and fully engaging that. I don't wanna partially engage it and then do what we call slam fit it when I turn the machine on. Uh, it will tend to wallow out your clutch plate and then you'll get a lot of bouncing and stuff in your machine. Uh, and then we're gonna run steel plates even though this is gonna be my first cut on this floor. Uh, a lot of times guys love uh, the steel plates. They keep everything nice and flat. Um, they will definitely tell you when you've got situations like this where I've got chatter. Now this is not chatter from a sanding machine, but actually chatter from the production process, from the planing process at the manufacturer. So I'm gonna use that flat plate to make sure I get all of the chatter out of the floor. But we'll also utilize the quarter inch intermediate pads with the steel plates. And there's a good reason for that. You could just go straight steel plates, but we always wanna use um, the steel plate and the intermediate pad and then our abrasive straight on that because what this does is the steel plate keeps everything super nice and flat and you want your abrasive right on that but then it gives you a little cushion so you've got a little bit of this floating system because if it's just super stiff definitely when I'm doing a brand new install if I have any high spots low spots it's going to want to climb up on those high spots and it's gonna jump around quite a lot. So if I use the intermediate pads in conjunction with the steel plates, it's just gonna help everything stay a lot smoother while still getting the floor super flat, uh, but not cause uh, that jumping or really help decrease any jumping I'm getting from high spots. So I've got quarter inch intermediate pad. Uh, then I've got 40 grit green that we'll start out here with is uh, one of our ceramic hybrid products. And I'm starting out with green because I want to be, you know, more aggressive on my first cut. Uh, some guys will stay with green throughout, uh, but then I've got options down the road that, that we can talk about as far as our abrasives. So once I've got my abrasives loaded, uh, then I can try to figure out my weights situation. Again, being that this is the first cut, uh, I definitely want to use at least one weight, maybe two, uh, because this is a brand new 
install and, and I noticed I've got, you know, some places where I've got a decent amount of over under wood. Uh, I'm going to put both weights on to start, see how that's going. And then I can adjust and just do one if I want to from there. And again, you want to lock these down uh, with the wing screws so that uh, it doesn't bounce around a lot if you do hit some of those spots. All right, so once we've got uh, our abrasives on, we've got our weights loaded on there, now we can go ahead and turn our power back on, grab our hose for our dust containment. And with any of your dust containment, whether it's on the power drive or any of your other machines, always make sure that you've got a positive locking system. Uh, I love these cuff clamps, they're heavy duty. Uh, I know it's not coming off of there. Uh, and then the position of our hose and our cable. Um, I like them coming up straight over the top. Uh, I feel just I can keep better control of them that way. Uh, some guys will let the, the power cord, you know, dangle more near the floor, but I like having them both on top. And in fact, we'll always go the extra step further of taking some Velcro strips uh, and Velcroing these together. It just helps keep them together and then keeps them more out of your way as you're using it. So four or five of these on down the line uh, is just a good way to stay more organized and stay a little cleaner and keep these two pieces of uh, accessories, the cable and the hose out of your way while you're working. And keep those things in mind and you'll be on your way to creating beautifully flat floors every time, every day with your Bona Power Drive.